what is the difference between IGHB mutated and IGHB un unmutated CLL? And can you talk about treatment considerations for those? Yeah, so that's, that's part of a bigger discussion around the prognostic workup of CLL and not all CLL is the same. And we've done a really good job of figuring out tests uh, to separate out the CLL patients that tend to behave more aggressively and respond to certain kind of therapies versus those that are, are more what we call indolent or slow growing and, and respond to other kinds of therapies. Uh, so um, I, I just, I do want to say, I haven't mentioned it yet. We still um, don't treat CLL if it's not causing any problems. Uh, and about half of patients get diagnosed uh, as sort of an accident. And, you know, they, they get a blood test for something else and their white count is elevated and, and, and that leads to a diagnosis, but they feel fine. We still leave those patients alone, even with these good, good treatment options we have. We recognize that there are a select percentage of CLL patients that don't ever need treatment. And so we don't just want to start treatment in everybody. Um, but um, I do still like to check this prognostic workup, uh, even if I'm not going to start treatment. But I, but I make sure and ask the patient if, if that's if that's what in line with with their um, with what they want. Um, but certainly, if you're going to start treatment, you're required by guidelines to uh, check a prognostic workup. And I would, and you know, really encourage the CLL patients tuning in to ask their oncologist, you know, what what is my prognostic workup. Um, if, if they're going to start treatment because uh, the oncologists, unfortunately, that have to deal with lots of other cancers, maybe don't always know the right tests uh, to send. I'm very uh, spoiled in that I get to just treat lymphoma and specifically focus a lot of my research in CLL and get to stay up with all this. I don't know how a general oncologist uh, keeps up with everything, uh, honestly. But the um, the big three tests are going to be the fish analysis, fluorescence in situ hybridization, uh, and and then uh, and then IGHV mutation analysis, and then also a TP53 mutation analysis. And I don't really have time to go through all of those, but um, IGHV is the question I get a lot. You know, what is that? It's one of these rare uh, findings where it's actually normal to, to have a mutation at the IGHV uh, loci. So IGHV stands for immune globulin heavy chain variable region. And, and it is usually mutated in, in B lymphocytes because it, 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 it's part of the process of a mature lymphocyte that is able to make a lot of different kinds of antibodies. Um, and it undergoes somatic hypermutation is what, the, what it's called as, it, as the B cell matures. Generally in oncology, um, the more mature a cancer is, the, the, the less aggressive it behaves and, and, and usually the, the easier it is to manage. And that is the case with CLL. So think of an unmutated IGHV CLL cancer as a, um, a, as a more primitive uh, um, or a more immature cancer clone, um, uh, and, 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 and as such, it is, it is harder uh, to treat. And, you know, about half of patients will be found to be unmutated at the IGHV. And historically, you know, we could, we could, we, all we had was chemo, and we knew these patients weren't going to respond for, for near as long as the IGHV mutated patients were to chemo. What's nice is with our targeted treatments, particularly, you know, the long-term data with the BTK inhibitors, it doesn't look like it matters whether uh, you're mutated or you're unmutated. So that's a that's a that's one of the really great things with our new treatments for CLL is it has um, the people that have benefited the most are the ones that were doing the worst. So that's great. It's not just it's not just the, the patients that were already doing well that are doing even better.